Thank you very much, Shox. I've decided our new duo name is Medication. Okay. Medication. You didn't tell me this before. Yeah, Why did you say it now? Well, because that, that's how. Oh, I see. Yeah. No, I like it. I like it. Yeah. You had Medicaid before. But yeah, we had Medicaid, but that's more American. But is so it Medicaid? Medication. Oh, I see yeah. what you did there. Uh, someone, okay. uh, someone put it in a Discord somewhere. I saw it linked. So. Oh, so you didn't think of it? No, of course. No, someone told you about I, it. I, like, so you don't, imitation you don't, is the sincerest form of flattery. You don't have sleepless nights where you think about our duo name? No. I do. You do? Yeah. What, what have you thought of? Nothing. Uh, exactly. <laughs> they, they weren't Better to steal it and have a good one than to just not think of anything. Anyway, Fact. we are here for uh, game one of the day. Misfits versus Astralis. And although the meta is a little bit slower in terms of kills and action, I was actually having a look at some of our numbers compared to Spring Split. And we're actually at a quicker game time on average than we were in Spring Split. Only 30 minutes our average game time after the first two days. Mm. Brought down by a couple of quicker games, but it has been kind of around that 30 minute mark on average, Kajor. I really wonder what that could be, because if I think back to just the drafts that pop into mind, I think of the all Nesfield kind of drafts, yeah. right? So lots of scaling, so that's surprising. It's surprising as well. Apparently our team's good at closing out, even if they would like to scale up yeah. a little bit more. It seems to be what's happening as we get on into the draft. Get down and dirty with it. Draft for game one. Misfits 0 2 so far have been really struggling to find purchase here in summer season. Uh, obviously, VTO has been very focused by their opposition. It seems like if you shut him down, you can shut down everything Misfits want to do. Yeah, VTO have been playing kind of back to back control majors. Oriana one game, Victor one game, and he's just been a little bit too targeted. Maybe Count's big mid will help him out a little bit because if you think back to when VTO was shining, it was on things like LeBlanc, Sile, Asakali, yeah. champions where he can rely on himself more than kind of scaling in his team, getting himself uh, to like an even spot in the game. Yumi banned out, Oran, Victor, AD carry banned on the side of Astralis. Um, We'll see if Zeri gets picked up. Uh, Senna also could be point of attention. Esriel, Wukong, still the champions that Misfits might be looking at. Of course, uh, Zeri perhaps a little bit lower priority because that Yumi has already been removed. Senna, as you say, really jumps to mind immediately and that's where Misfits are going to go. Seems like whenever she is open, she is picked. Neon has already played her once so far this split. Was the key point of focus for his team when he did 100% kill participation on that pit. And you can get kind of crazy with it, can't you? Once you get Senna, you open up a plethora of whatever the hell you want to play. We saw Swains, we've seen Scions, we've seen all the likes of it. Tam Kench, kind of like the normal pick that you would get with Senna. We're back. Yeah, you're still a little quiet in my ears. Going in and out. <laughs> yeah, I can hear it myself as well. Hopefully we're back. But there's a 1-2 Scion from Chachi. Uh, okay, Ooh, so we've got okay. Scion Wukong already for Astralis. Um, Maybe with Orn being down, Chachi was like, I will still pick a tank, I'm still a Chad. And he's gone and one two it. So I expect Misfits maybe to counter pick top here, pick their jungler, or pick something like the Tam Kenshin of Diego. What would you counter pick if you were picking into a Scion? There's a, a few different options that you can try and just scale up alongside him. You're not really gonna have too much kill threat in the lane. I think the, the one that stands out the most is Aatrox. When, you yeah. have, when you're against Scion Wukong, Aatrox is definitely one of the best top laners. Camille can work as well a little bit, but Aatrox is just a better version for fights, you have to imagine. But Lilia picked up for Schlatten into Wukong. Um, I was having this conversation with Vedius about AD junglers. Um, Wukong and Grave specifically get not so much countered, but struggle a little bit against AP junglers, right? Because their innate kit just gives them armor. You play against things like Nidalee and Lilia. Uh, clear speed can be matched or be a bit faster, and then the damage share is just a bit more difficult for those champions. And a lot of people have been talking about this Lilia into Wukong, wondering why it hasn't been brought out as much. Uh, uh, with Lee Sin remaining on the cards, I did wonder if Schlatan Ooh. would want to take that. It's been banned against in both games so far, but instead the Lilia alongside that Tom Kench. Pike now locked for Astralis. Yonghun is going to take that down towards the bottom lane. Does work well into the Tom Kench, who puts himself at a little bit of uh, a, a tricky situation in the bottom lane. Yeah, it definitely does. I think the idea here is Senna Tom Kench is not really that much of an oppressive lane past yeah. the first few levels into melee matchups, right? And the Pike, maybe an Estrial Pike lane, you can get the Pike outside of the lane and roam around. It does work well into the shield later on as well, because the thick skin shield that Tom Kench has doesn't matter for Pike's ultimate. Pike will still execute you through shield, so it can work out pretty yeah. well. Gnar bans also um, something to look at and keep your eye on, because T1 today was 1-2-ing Gnar. Uh, they yeah. had such high pry on Gnar, they were first picking Gangplank as well, so, I mean, Zeus, phenomenal top laner, but they have clear kind of power picks on the top side of the map. Um, Gonna take away the Vex there to avoid any more dive. Of course, Dior, I think Vex was probably his most played. I haven't checked it, but yeah, I it saw he was playing Definitely so many was. Vex games. I mean, the only way Astralis were picking up wins were Jarvan Vex kind of full engage comps. 
Um, we'll see what the Stralis' last ban is. I imagine it would be targeted at top lane, uh, unless you want to kind of take away one of VTO's blind picks. It would make the most sense to try and give this judge just a slightly easier lane up towards that top side. Ari, though, instead, will mean that VTO has to go a little bit further into his pool. And obviously, Dayor has counter pick for mid lane here if he wants it. Expect to see AD on four into an R5 mid lane pick for Astralis. Yeah, I think Estriel is definitely the best bet you'd have to imagine for Astralis. I yeah. mean, you could also run something like Kaisa Pike, maybe. Uh, Seraphine Pike is what Misfits were expecting, so that's going to take get taken away from Kobe. And I think you're completely right. Just counts pick mid on five, pretty standard stuff. And then you have to imagine what does what does VTO pick mid here? Uh, it's a bit of an awkward situation because you're playing with the Lilia, of course, having the same damage here in mid jungle. Yone picked up for Dior, blind. Uh, maybe one inkling I. I was having when I was going through that train of thought was maybe that's something VTO wanted with Lilia. Yeah, maybe. Um, and they're just trying to deny it straight away. One of the strongest AD mids next to an AP jungle. Does mean that Astralis is very AD heavy. I imagine maybe a Ziggs last pick could yeah. come in here for them. Ziggs would make a lot of sense. Gives you good wave clear down towards that bottom side. Makes it pretty easy for you just to clear out the wave and gets the pike out of lane as well. Jax now locked in for Misfits. Expect that to go up towards the top lane. Gives you some of that physical damage that they were looking for with the Lilio in the jungle. Ooh, gone. We wing it. Yasuo versus Yone. Definitely won't happen because there's no knockups on Misfits, but we can always Abyssal switch. Voyage. Yeah, Abyssal 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 that's, that's reliable. <laughs> Silas <laughs> gets picked up. Silas, of course, really good into things like Pike. Take away the ult. You can just make a montage and teamfight. So that'll be nice for Vito. Last pick here for Astralis. You have to imagine. Ooh, Vega. a Vagar okay. bot lane. Okay. Something a little bit different. I'm Ooh. liking it from Astralis as well because it's. A little bit out of the conventional. You know, we've seen Younghoon play the Soraka in game one. Now he's gone over to the Pike. You have this AP bot laner that we really haven't seen that much in the LEC. And then picking the Yone, knowing that VTO would be looking towards it. It's not the stock standard Astralis that perhaps we would have seen in spring. Yeah, and I don't think they have the strongest of lanes, right? I don't think any of these lanes will dominate, for say, right? I mean, the Pike just wants to get out of lane. The Scion's going to get pushed in and loses to Jax. Yone will be contested in this melee matchup, so I think a lot of focus from both side lanes will go towards mid, but Astralis' team fight is pretty clear-cut. Lots of CC, lots of frontline, lots of front to back. You can dive if you want to as well. Whereas Misfits has a very strong split pressure in the Jax. Same damage share in mid-jungle, but they have a very good scaling bot lane, so we'll see how they dissect the map, but mostly playing towards sides, I imagine. Yeah, getting that Jax in a position where he can just farm in a side lane makes a lot of sense. Misfits still looking for their first win of summer. And perhaps looking to VTO in the mid lane, the spring MVP to try and put him, put them on his back once again. Astralis have come out in pretty fine form, I'd say, here in summer. They've looked relatively consistent. They put up a challenge against G2 on day one, even though they did end up losing and took down BDS yesterday. It's a, a revitalized Astralis with the addition of uh, Jonghun, Xerxi, and Visa Chachi. A lot of experience coming in as well. Yeah. Support kind of like Rookie is. Copy, of course, has a lot of experience, but we're ready for game one Misfits versus Astralis. <laughs> Misfits are ready to rapidly advance down this bottom lane. Sprinting like Usain Bolt towards these bushes, perhaps looking to see if Yonghoon would overstep, but he just places the ward down towards that bottom river bush and will be fine. So all of Misfits here will back away. Mercer will ward then base. And usually we see the supports going for that Oracle. It actually looks like it was, I uh, don't know who it was who warded. Ah, it was uh, Neon. So Medic. Medic. Yes. Tom Kench. Hail of Blades. Yes. Aggressive. It is aggressive. Do you think it's going to work? Well, I doubt it. Um, I mean, there's not that many easy targets to get onto. Unless you yeah, can get on top of Vagar with no flash, then I think he'll do a lot of damage and probably get a one-shot. Um, but yeah, the pike will be a little bit slippery. That's the thing, right? You get onto the pike, he just dashes away and then hooks you back. You get onto the Vagar and he hasn't used Cage. He just cages on top of, him, uh, on top of himself and Senna can never really approach. So the reason that you take Halo Blades on Tom Kench, firstly, Obviously, the extra auto attacks give you a bit more damage, but the acquired tastes, you stack up your passive quicker with those three auto attacks alongside the Tongue Lash. That means you can get the stun onto your opposition if you Tongue Lash them again, or even look for that Devour. Irrelevant here, waiting in the bush, just trying to keep Visichachi a little bit apprehensive about approaching his lane. Yeah, I'm also just looking at 
hold that for a second as Revan will get a good trade, of course, into the Sion. Looking at pikes here, every single pike normally runs Halo Blades as expected, yeah. right? You get the hook, you get a lot of damage in. Or Aftershock in some cases. Never really seen a Glacial Augment pike. So the reason I don't mind it here is you talked about how you didn't think Astralis had too much lane pressure, too much lane control. And Halo Blades pike is very strong early on at getting a lot of damage down onto your opponents. You know you're really not looking to aggressively trade in the lane too much. So running the Glacial Augment gives you that slow, gives you that damage reduction. It makes sense to me. I'm not saying it's entirely optimal, but if you don't think you're going to get kills in the lane, reducing that damage can definitely help you out. Yeah, puts the slowdown, makes so Vagar can land the spells easily. Will help as well when the cage is up. So Misfits right now getting a little bit of bot pressure as expected. Uh, don't, not really fightable level one. You're playing Pike Vagar against the Tom Kench. I think mid lane is going to be where the focus is for both teams. I think both these kind of champions want to walk into the wave to push it. So that means that innately they'll trade against each other just like this as they try to contest the wave. So that means both junglers need to hover around. Uh, you're level two taking a hell of a lot of damage there. We'll have access to the E. VTO has it as well. Cookie on VTO means that 1v1 should be slightly in his favor. Neither side has Ignite. You see Dale going through the pots as well. Has that Doran shield trying to heal himself back up. It's had a relatively good start to summer so far. It's Dale on a team that perhaps we don't expect to give you too much. He's looked pretty strong as the hook does go down here. Mercer's not going to be stunned, and we can go back to talking about the mid lane. Yeah, really good stats coming out of the yard. I mean, we saw kind of glimpses of promise towards the end of the split on the Vex games and things like this. He just needed to expand his champion pool. Ryze was also one of his kind of favorite champions. Yeah. Uh, and now he's played, I mean, two games of Victor, I believe it is. One win, one loss. And of course, that champion can dish out a lot of damage, so inflates his numbers a bit. But when you're going up against the likes of Caps and actually going even in the lane and putting up a fight, um, that's always a good sign for rookie. It definitely is. And for Astralis and uh, for him in particular, it's a, a good sign of what could come in summer. Obviously, Astralis placed 10th in spring would be looking at a better performance than that because you can't really get much worse. Like you can't place definitely. 11th in a, in a split with uh, only 10 teams. But if they could somehow manage to pick up a few early wins, they could be looking at, you know, one of those lower playoff seeding spots. Would be impressive if they finished 11th, but Irrelevant yep. might have kill pressure here. He has Ghost if he wants to pop it, Chachi. Oh! oh! Flash was too late from Chachi. Hook's going to come down here as Zersi looks down towards the bottom side. Ignite taking onto Kobe. Mercer trying to step forward. Doesn't have the Flash, doesn't really have anywhere to go. The Thick Skin, a possibility. Jonghyun looking for the Hook once again. One second before it's back up. Here it goes. Pull back Mercer into the waiting arms of Kobe. Meanwhile, Fighting in the mid lane, Dale's trading with VTO. The Kingslayer will heal him up. Dale looking for the knock up here as well. Soul on bound goes forward. VTO flashes away. A lot of fighting all around the map in the same couple seconds there. When the camera pan bot, I think Mercer must have flashed forwards to try and get a kill on to Jong Hoon, but as he did that, Xerxes was on the way. And as the top kill happened, I mean, Irrelevance W, it's almost like a Wukong Q in a sense, where if you flash the same time that the uh, auto attack goes off, it doesn't cancel, it just goes straight through. And Chachi ends up getting solo killed. So we'll take a look at the replay of the top fight. Chachi being a little bit disrespectful here. The initial trade was. Did a lot of damage to his HP bar, but his idea is he wants to crash the wave. Bone plating's up, doesn't feel too much damage, and at this point, I think Chachi just has to say, okay, I'm going to base and TP, there's nothing I can do here. Uh, but he greets a bit for these two range creeps on his Q, and ends up dying. Flashes the same second irrelevant presses W. Nice auto W cancel there, in the same frame there by irrelevant. So, no, Versa does flash the E from Yonghoon, and then gets hooked back in. So, tries to turn, sees the enemy jungler, and realizes he's dead. Yeah, as soon as you're in that sort of situation, you really can't get out of it as Tom can slowly Walk your way away, but the Bone Skewer's on a short enough cooldown that Kobe very happily accepts that kill. We saw a bit of trading in the mid lane as well as VTOS had to burn both his summoners. Day or TP back as well, but does have a flash advantage. Does indeed, it's irrelevant. Level 6 now. He's Pops the ghost. Here as well. Nose Chachi doesn't have dead. flash, the Empower. Hitting him with a lamppost over and over again. Visit Chachi. Knows he's dead, goes back, will use the zombie passive to try and clear out some of these minions and Chachi perhaps on the phone to the boss right now, being yeah. like, okay, mate, I've died twice, what do I do next? Yeah, <laughs> what do I do next, boss? Because if this was nameplates off, that's who I think it would be. Bows but... is like, mate, I play volleyball these days. Yeah, Sion sucks, Chachi, why did you pick it? <laughs> uh, that definitely wasn't a good death. I mean, he didn't really achieve much with the wave. He should be able to catch it in time, though, but the problem is this Jax is now sitting at 2-0. We'll rush towards the Sunder, and it's not like the matchup gets any better for the Sion. He's already a thousand gold behind in that bottom lane. What Shot waiting around hell? here. John Hoon looking for the hook. And it caught up with the last embrace as well. Abyssal Voyage for the follow up. And John Hoon just too deep. Neon takes him out. Misfits have been brought to life today, it seems. It took them a game and 15 minutes to get their first kill of summer here. In six minutes, they already have three.
definitely do. I think they would have got the 2v2 kill there without Stratan anyway because of the root and then the chain CC from the knockup. So now in a position of Xerxes, it's kind of an awkward spot. Top is losing so hard to the point where I think they would get 1v2'd. Um, mid lane is probably where he's going to put his focus when he hits that level 6. Uh, Schlatan's gonna walk into Xerxes' blue buff here. Down a level, we'll see what he can get done. Has access to his ultimate. Yonghoon looks for the hook, does miss. Xerxes so going in, there's the root coming in as well as Kobe comes forward with the Predator. Abyssal Voyage for Jonghoon will fall. Mercer now on the wrong side of the fight though. It is a 4v3 in favor of Misfits. Mercer trying to walk away from this one, but the rest of his team have abandoned him and the thick skin can only save him for so long. Knocked up, Dayo on the board. Okay, so the, the invade kind of works there. You sacrifice one, but I think Misfits the real winners there. But Shlatan had to use his flash. Dior still has access to the ultimate. BTO as well. Could take it away if he wants to. But now Xerxes is coming through lane. Imagine the wave's not in a great state. And Kobe's flash. flash. He knows Neon doesn't have flash. So he flashes forward, tries to keep him in place. So much damage from the primordial burst. And the decimating smash has been used. Jonghun Jong now out of the lane. Looking for the stun. BTO oh, going back in with the Kingslayer down. Flashes away and Irrelevance down to answer a one for one. Jonghun going to try and get away from this one. Doesn't have much in the terms of escape tools, but Irrelevant will leave him to escape back underneath that tower. Nine kills in roughly eight minutes. So much fighting going across the entirety of the map. Dayoro now sitting on two kills. Managed to take down VTO. Turns into a one for one, but he loses the brunt of this wave. This is the problem with top lane winning in isolation so hard. Can push in the wave top, move towards mid, affect the mid fights. So we'll see Irrelevant base and run back and catch that top wave. The second he has Sunderer, he is going to start making a montage in the top lane because the Scion is just going to get absolutely demolished. Chachi is sitting on two Ruby Crystals right now. Xerxes is going to start up the Herald. Irrelevant should spot it out. Yonghoon is around, but the rest of Misfits are collapsing in. And Neon and Mercer down towards the bottom side. Misfits should give this one up if they fight Surely, it. Surely, right? They don't know where the enemy bot lane is. Now they realize Yonghoon is in the area and Irrelevant has stepped too far forward. Thinking he had reinforcements, he does not. Because Misfits cannot back him up. Astralis, get the shutdown, get the kill, and we'll get the Rift Herald to boot. Yeah, Relevant getting a little bit ahead of himself there on his third game on the LEC stage. Is very strong seeing a 3-0, but of course you have a shutdown on your head. Gives that over to Cirque, ends up dying. 600 gold across. Now, Misfits will get a little bit of bot plates in return, and Chachi will be the one to go towards bot now. I mean, Astralis have a really good map state here now. The fact that Relevant died and their bot lane showing bot, they could invade his topside camp, start hitting top tower, drop the Herald, and get a lot of gold into Kobe. As the ultimate's used there. Mercer smart to block it. That stops this Chachi from being able to get all the way back to the tower. Chachi will still be able to get here in time to catch any of these minions that he desires. This forces Neon and Mercer to retreat. The reason this happens, obviously, is because Astralis invested their bot lane towards the top side for that Herald. They stay around, clear out the wave. Chachi then has the unstoppable onslaught to get down towards that bottom side and it gives you that ability to react and catch as many waves as possible. Definitely does. Yeah, it can't really dive him. Whatsoever. Yeah, it's pretty difficult. Need way more items to be able to dive the sound. And even when you dive him, he doesn't really care. He just catches the wave. No. I watch enough bows to know that. <laughs> Chachi sadly not going for Prowler's Claw here on the sign. Instead, it's, deciding it's, he wants to be attacking. It blows my mind. I mean, I think Bows played a Scion game recently and he went full crit and he dies in his passive. He just kills three <laughs> people. It, it, like, you, you'd never really expect the punches. Three punches and you're dead. Uh, it's like wearing gloves studded with rocks or something. <laughs> it's unreal. Who's looking around mid, got level six. Good hook onto VTO there, looking for the stun as well, but the Kingslayer dashed away by VTO. The mobility on the Silas helping him out just a little bit there, was ignited as well. Beauty of both these comps is they're both so skirmish heavy. You know, Yone, Wukong, Pike really wants to fight a lot of the time in the early stages because they can spike at level 6. Whereas Misfits have a similar sort of thing with the Lilia, the Silas. A lot of fights happening, Jax is ahead, which innately makes him want to fight more. Yonghun's just going to go for some top side vision. Misfits is going to start up the Dragon. That leaves Irrelevant alone on the top side of the map. A place the map with incredibly amount, high amount of Astralis wards. They have so much deep vision. They basically have a map pack right now. They could look for a dive if they want. Neon's trying to scout out a bit for him. 225 gold just in control wards towards the top side. Neon dodges away. The sprint and the stun will still connect. Base sealed lands on him as well. And Neon doesn't have flash. Death from below from Jonghoon is enough. He took that dodge personally. And that's why you don't walk into Astralis' side of the jungle. This is the problem with cross maps, right? Your team's on Drake, their team's on topside tower. Just don't walk in. Regardless of what information you could get, they're probably there anyway, right? Just a game of probability. But now Irrelevant's picked up that Sunder. We'll see what damage he can get done. The smart thing for Astralis so far this game is what they've done is they've taken Chachi and just removed him from the top lane equation. Irrelevant hasn't been laning against the Scion for the past five minutes. He's been laning against the Vagar. So the CS number is actually going back to normal, stabilizing the lane a bit. You can see the gold lead going over to Astralis as well. Only one kill ahead, but the fact that they were able to get 
those two tower plates in the top lane. That one tower plate down towards the bottom side has helped them out a ton. They still have the Rift Herald for about a third of its cooldown, so we'll be using that in the next 45 seconds or so. Definitely will be. And still four minutes on the next Drake, of course. First Drake was taken quite late on into the game. Charlotte's actually opting to put their bot lane back towards bot side, expecting Cirque to try to place a Herald down there, and top lane will be in isolation once again. Just lots of contests around mid, as expected. Yeah, mid lane has been a key point of focus for these two teams. The BTO has been a key point of focus for all of his opponents, basically playing 1v5 through the early game in the last couple of games, just because teams are so ready to focus him, knowing if you can shut him down, if you can stop his agency in a game, you can really neuter Misfit's ability to play the game. 3v3 down towards this bottom side as the Rift Herald does go down, Kedral. Yeah, it definitely does. We saw it in playoffs, right? BTO really could not find any impact whatsoever when you have one way to win the game. It's because he plays for EG. He plays for EG? Impact. Oh, nice. Okay. No, you, dude, you, you said one in the green room as well, and it took me like five minutes to register in my brain. Maybe I'm slow today, or you're just extremely witty. Maybe it's Medic on a Sunday. I, I'm not sure if it's witty or if I just pick a word you've said and try and find something that correlates to that Relation. in my brain. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure it's actually intelligent humor. It's just out of nowhere. I think it's intelligent. Well, I appreciate it. I think that. you're an intelligent man. That's kind of you, man. It was a smart one. I think you have to, to, to actually make that relation, you have to be intelligent. Also, I could just be sitting here saying, okay, what word is Kedra going to say that I can pick something random out about and not listening to the analysis that ah, you're doing? So you're just listing out to pick out one singular word without actually listening to what I'm saying. Exactly. I see. I'll try that. That's no. why we work so well together as a duo. In, in one ear, out the other. Yeah, you don't <laughs> listen to me, I don't listen to you. We just say what we want. <laughs> we know? just take one word from what the other one said and make a joke out of it. Exactly. Well, Kobe is going to be... I wonder how many stacks he has. 114 stacks so far on the Vagar. Pretty big. Stacking up the AP a little bit. 233 ability power with the Everfrost only. A little bit of damage going to Mercen. Of course, he will be the only AP damage. I know Vagar V2 is out there somewhere smiling, knowing yep. that there's not enough... There's not so many AP damage on his team that Force of Nature can be bought or anything like this. It will just be the single AP damage. will make Vagar's life a lot easier in terms of itemization. And if anyone's wondering why we talk about Vagar sacks, uh, basically every time you last hit a minion with your Q or you hit an enemy with any of your spells, you build up a stack. You can build up more than one stack depending on what minions you're killing. And the more stacks you build up, the more AP you get. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So 120 stacks means he's got 120 extra AP, which is why you often see Everfrost into immediate Rabadons on a Vagar, which is something you wouldn't really see on other AP carries. And you can see it there, he W's the first, and he goes in a Q through these, melee, these two ranged. Yep. Another couple stacks, mm -hmm. and then, yeah, normally you would save it for there, but don't think he had the time. He has Predator as well, so he can get close quite easily to get the cage. And once you're surrounded by the cage, the only way you can get out is some kind of blink. Dashes will get canceled, so that's why most of the time you'll see teams just flash out of the cage to make sure that they're safe. Uh, but the game has slowed down a little bit. One minute on the Dragon, I expect there to be a little bit of action around that. Misfits probably want to get those stacking up as soon as possible. Irrelevant's been a bit quiet since being so so far ahead on the on the jack. Still has quite a nice CS lead and will be pushing into top right now. It looks like Dior and Chachi are collapsing towards top. Kobe will get the first tower of the game. We'll see if Misfits respond. I think that quietness is more that Astralis haven't given him someone to fight into. You can see like Chachi isn't up there unless there are three men members of Astralis up there. Dior now here just to clear out the wave, even though Shalatan is going to join. Unstoppable onslaught will come out from Chachi. Shalatan pops the stopwatch to try and get away from it, then flashes through, but the Cyclone's going to follow him in. Irrelevant diving onto Dayo. Already one down, a Shlatan will fall. Dayo trying to escape. Irrelevant joined by two more members of his team. The Dawning Shadow didn't do enough to Dayo to take him out. And Misfits will be able to stop the Astralis advance, but it cost them their jungler. Astralis really just controlling the map right now. They get the bot tier one, and they're also first to the play in top. Maybe Irrelevant overstaying a little bit too long there, and Shlatan is the one getting baited in. Vin Diesel on Sion just bends it around the corner, and Shlatan's forced to pop the stopwatch straight away. Even if he flashed, he would have been followed unless he went in sort of maybe a downwards direction, but then I think the rest of Astralis would collapse. All I can think of now is instead of the roar that Sion does as he charges in, it's just it's just him going, FAMILY! family! <laughs> <laughs> well, next time we see it, I'll crowd. think of it as well. <laughs> I'm waiting for a crowd, just saying. Oh, Yesterday God. we had the Wii Woos, today we've and got the, the family and, and the Pews. Pews. That's true. Family. <laughs> family. Uh, well, Chachi is two levels down right now, so he will need a family when it comes to team fights. He needs to play with his team, make sure they're all stacked up together, play some kind of front to back, and make sure that they're safe. He's going to be their protection. Just a big meaty shield. Won't do yeah. too much damage, but can have a lot of gap close and chain CC. And you don't really need the damage when you've got Pike, when you've got the Yone and the Vega as well to follow up. Credit to Jonghoon as well on this Pike. He's constantly been finding Neon with these hooks. Neon forced to flash away there. 
as we were chatting. TP coming in from Chachi. Irrelevant didn't have his, so Chachi's going to be first to this play as Irrelevant has worked his way down towards the mid lane. Decimating Smash coming out. And Visit Chachi will keep Mercer at bay. Dragon taken first of the game for Astralis, second of the game in total. Another hook onto Mercer. There's the Everfrost follow up. Irrelevant diving in. And the damage is only onto the clone as Astralis look to reset and back away from the fight. Okay, so. They get themselves Dragon and they're out. They're going to be able to catch Midwave as well. Misfits don't really have anything to respond to. Misfits had another option of just going towards the Herald there or trying to hit the mid-tier one and rather than taking the fight. In the end, they aren't able to force it. I mean, their engage is pretty lackluster and unless BTO takes some kind of Scion ult or Mercer gets a knockup, maybe irrelevant flanking, their champs just naturally work way better over sides. Uh, irrelevant fighting up against the Yone. VTO could try to 1v1 the Scion. I think he needs a couple more items to fight up against Dior, who will probably win right now. But the problem is, if you're playing a comp that plays mostly towards sides with things like the Jax, the enemy team has a Pike and a Predator Vagar and mid push, it's really hard to find any objective to play for. Um, so 1-1 one, one apiece for the Dragons will be a long, long way till we see any souls. Herald is still up. That'll crack open a mid tower if either team gets it. So quite an important objective. Second Herald can do a lot of damage to open up the map. Yeah, especially with the mid towers still remaining, you really want to be able to take those down. 2,000 gold lead though for Astralis through this early game, and Misfits have been struggling in the early game generally, as have Astralis. Obviously one of them had to come out with a lead in this game, and this time it is Astralis who have got that slight advantage. Second Herald has been started, Jonghun looking for it, TP coming in as well as Kobe's going to join oh, this search, fight. Search. Family! Neon caught out of the back line and the death from below finds its mark. John Hoon's going to be able to get one. Irrelevant chase down towards the bottom side is Dale's looking for the damage himself. Flashes over the wall. Slatsen going to join in. Another oh, death oh, no. A triple for Jung Hoon. He's going to hook BTO oh. back. Lands the stun as well. X marks the spot, but it doesn't quite connect as VTO unable to dodge away from the primordial burst. Fight goes in favor of Astralis, and it's the rookie support of Jung Hoon who just gets a triple kill on the pike. Maybe could have got himself the quad jump, but he just mistimed it. Maybe expected a little more damage to go on to VTO. But that's going to crack the game wide open. Mid tower is going to fall. They're going to get themselves Herald and Cirque just taking the uh, the hex portal right behind Misfits on top of two people straight away. Could save the E as well and the W to get out because he literally landed on top of Neon at that point. We'll take a look at it again. Chachi also quite quick to collapse with his ultimate. And Mercer here importantly has to use one of his spells to jump over the wall here. So it's really hard for him to get in range. He has to flash over I think to try and eat. There's nothing he can really do in this fight whatsoever. He's trying to find a way in but they're all way too split up. Schlatan's on one side, Xerxes flashing over to make sure he can't get close. And then, yeah, just fantastic knockup by Chachi. Right, credit to Dale as well, and Kobe, who kept the rest of the Misfits team at arm's length with the event horizon. That Vigar E makes it very difficult for him to ever approach the fight. And of course, Dale as well with his ultimate. Now, Astralis, 4,000 gold ahead. Coming up towards the 20 minute mark, they also have that Rift Herald to try and crack this tier one in the mid lane if they so desire. Irrelevant has struggled after that early game where he was 3 0 1, now sitting at 3 2 and 1. Has the Frozen Heart, but that's not going to help you too much if Kobe is in the fight. Misfits just look way too disjointed in team fights right now. And yes, it's happening today, but it was also happening yesterday and the day before. They just look so underwhelming in fights. They need to play together, communicate better. VTO looking for a pick onto Jong Hoon and Chachi just there to make sure he's safe. Cowardly charges away. Irrelevant was going to take the tower, so no too big surprise that Chachi didn't really want a piece of that action. We'll trade with Irrelevant a little bit, but the, the Scion's not here to fight the Jax at all. Yes, he'll get a bit of chip damage in, but really he's on wave play duty as the Jax pushes in that uh, way. And just going back to draft a little bit, when the Senna first pick came in, we saw Chachi want to a Scion, and I think it makes a lot of sense, not only because Orin's banned away and he probably wants to pick a tank anyway, but Senna as an AD carry with Tam Kench next to her means that their tank shredding ability from bot lane is very, very weak. You know, yeah. you don't have things like Kai'Sa or any kind of Kraken Slayer champion. You have a Lethality champion hitting up against a full armor Scion, right, at this point in the game, so... Relying on other sources of damage, of course, the lane phase was quite difficult and maybe could have been snowballed a lot harder, but now there's a TP behind Dior. He has no flash. Chachi has TP if he wants to match. I mean, Dario does have the ultimate here. He's going to catch Irrelevant with it. Counter-Strike coming out as Irrelevant dives in for the Sun. Counter TP now used. Stopwatch as well. Schlatten's going to try and join this one. Maybe catch Kobe out with the event. Horizon goes in. Slate only onto Kobe. Irrelevant now locked in the midst of three members of Astralis. And he's been left alone by the rest of his team. One for one trade. Oh, so oh. far, comes in, gets another. 3v4, Astralis looking to mop this one up. Schlatter, no ultimate ignited. Trying to get forward onto Jong Hoon, who can pop this blast going to get away. Won't use it yet. Xerxes dives in once again. Dale trying to heal off the minions. Meanwhile, the decoy distracts them. Chachi low. 
Unstoppable onslaught against the wall, but Schlatten with the movement speed and with the swirl seed will get the chase. Zhang Hun's gonna get a stun. Dayo has just backed away, just pushed in that uh, top side of the map. Yeah, it looks like Misfit's coming out on top there and will be able to take away the red buff, get a little bit of deep vision into Astralis' top side jungle. It all came off the back of the Yor, just kind of pushing it a little bit too deep. Dragon's up in five seconds. Chachi dead for 25, doesn't have access to that TP. Maybe Misfit's just want to take a beeline and just run straight towards it. Dayo's gonna try and get mid prior if he can. No fate sealed for him, no flash as well makes it very difficult for him to really push too far forward. Misfits could collapse on him pretty quickly. The rest of Astralis are here though, and Kobe with the Predator could look to get in. They are going for Neon. Neon does have flash, hook onto Mercer. Jung Hoon getting out, irrelevant, looking for the flank himself. Uh -oh. Jumps in, double counter strike, double stun. Event Horizon there, but Irrelevant's gonna get stunned up. The Abyssal Voyage, and there's the Everfrost as well. Irrelevant low, able to get away. The Highlanders might doing so much work, but him that extra tankiness. Chachi now joins it with the Hex Gates. Misfit stepping in, DTO steals away the ultimate, and is looking for something with the Predator coming back out from Kobe as Astralis trying to turn it around. Dayo does have TP, he's backing in the mid lane as the Dragon now started by Misfits. Would be their second of the game. Counter TP and Dale going deep, fate sealed. An option for him, VTO so looking for that death from below. Dragon, Rift held, secured, Dale. Base sealed onto Irrelevant is a possibility. Soul on bounds. Counter Strike going in. Abyssal Voyage as well could be used. Mercer trying to get the damage in. Jung Hoon on the flank as well. Already one has gone. VTO falls. Dale jumps back into the pit. Jung Hoon trying to keep Irrelevant at bay. He dives back in. He gets one. But at what cost? Irrelevant. Taken out by Kobe. The Dragon as well on the menu for Astralis. Neon and Schlatan trying to trade into this beef gate that is Vizichachi. And the water donkey is damn tanky. That Scion unkillable. Xerxes will help Vizichachi pick up a kill. The tongue lash dodged. He's still alive. And he is still alive as he walks away. The Yor Solo, the dragon off screen there. Such a long fight. All started in the choke where Irvin looked for the jump over the wall for an engage. Nobody died in that choke, ironically. Then Dior getting chunked out so low rejoins the fight. Here it is again. Everyone kind of from Misfit zoned away from the cage initially, and then Chachi joins the fight through the Hex Gate. Dior can't find a kill because his ultimate's not up yet. You can see it's just coming off cooldown right now. Chachi rejoins. Misfit's forced to regroup. Now, Dior bases. TP's behind. Has an incredible flank, but the fight's just split up way too much. Kobe in the last fight on top lane actually died before the fight began. He tried to kill VTO, but didn't manage to trade one for one. So the top side fight, Astralis was playing with literally no carries. And this time around, they were both just popping off on both sides of the fight. They were dashing around, Misfits on the other side, Kobe just taking out VTO. And the fight continues. You can see Jonghun doing such a good job of just distracting Misfits. Irrelevance like, okay, we can get this kill, but pays for it with his life. And Chachi basically untouched through the entirety of this. Thanks up Misfits for what seems like a lifetime. Five and a half thousand gold to lead for Astralis, their second dragon of the game. They could turn over to this Baron, but unless they have Day or there, their Baron taking skill is very slow. They have an incredibly fast Nash, though, I think. You do? Like, you, if Dayor's there, it's oh, really, really quick. There, yeah. The 100% crit build. And they have a lot of good turn options as well. Kobe can just pop the Predator and pop the E. Someone has to flash straight away. Oh, Neon, he's going to have to flash away. Event Horizon coming down. There's the unstoppable onslaught. Looking for his family. Boom. Found him. Gets the wave. And now Senna not having flash. Tom Kench, no flash. Irrelevance not running it. Schlatan, no flash. They should have these timers. There should be yeah. the support or the jungler just copy pasting these timers in the chat non stop in the exact timers. And they should know that if they just start this Baron up right now, they can turn instantly. And the first one that walks up with no flash is going to get the cage around them. They're going to get hooked. They're going to get knocked up. And Chachi now looking for some information. This Baron will go down really quickly with Vagar and Yone on top of it. I think it's going to be gone before Schlatan can get in range. His flash is coming up in a second, though. Yeah, it's already gone. Down to a thousand. Secured. Smited. TP comes in from Irrelevant. And Misfits might look for a fight. Might feel like it's their last hope. Irrelevant jumps in. And Horizon goes down and Misfits really can't find too much. Zersi, the only one caught out here, but Schlatan had to jump across the wall to do so. Jonghun does have the death below, but it looks like Astralis actually may just want to disengage. Jonghun thinking other of it. Perhaps has a different plan in mind. The hook hits onto Mercer. Ooh. Oh, good stopwatch from Schlatan, but now he's not in the best of situations. They are looking for the jump across the wall, does have the fate seal. They're going to Mercer first. Counter strike by Irrelevant, but he only stuns the two tanks, and that's not really what you're looking for. BTO stolen and death from below, so Astralis do fall low. He will be able to secure those kills, but the face shield will find him. They are dashing. Immortal shield both Her dashing life. away to survive once again. Dashes back. Schlatten takes him. BTO, Schlatten, and Neon have to walk away wounded, though, as Astralis continue on the chase. And the unstoppable onslaught meets BTO. Decimating smash stopped with that watch, but he can only watch as he dies afterwards. Copy unstoppable. 717.
on the Vega. Astralis now just running away with this game. Very decisive from the get-go. And now they just start the fight off. Shatter pop stopwatch. And here we get to see the beautiful interaction of Pike Hook into Vagar Cage. So when the Jax jumps in, he gets pulled in. Normally you see things like an Alistar Vagar, so he can headbutt him into the cage. This time around, irrelevant. When the second he wants to turn, he gets pulled into it, stunned up into four five members, instantly dies. So your tries his best to dash around here to survive. But he ends up falling to Schlatan's burn, and then from there onwards, Astralis just chasing forwards. They've got nothing left where he misfits. They have to run for the hills, and Chachi chases them with the ultimate. As much as you can threaten one player on Astralis at any given time, they have a triple threat tri team right now. Xerxi has the Black Cleaver and the Moor, and Deo as well, as you said, with that 100% crit build, is in such a strong position. Kobe, three items complete. Rabadon second. It's probably at about 250 stacks right now on that Vega as well. He'll be sitting. I'm g let's do a quick guess on how much AP he has. Go on. Uh, 722. Yeah, I was going to go 650. Okay. So we'll have a look in a second as the observers will switch to copy for us. 921! Okay. Okay. <laughs> we were nowhere close. Just I mean, a tad. I guess the Baron helps out a little bit. Um, but yeah, Rabadons, he's got 304 stacks. We were well off. Yeah, almost 1,000 AP at 27 minutes in the game. And the magic resistance on the enemy team just isn't enough. Only that more, really, in terms of magic resistance for Misfits. And Astralis now pushing in the bottom lane as irrelevant. Pushes in the top. Doesn't have the TP to join his team. Might get an objective balance though, but he's to make, make sure his base doesn't die. Astralis gonna get the first neighbor to They could push on, they have double cannon here. If they just want to use the cage to try and hit the tower, but no, they're gonna move towards mid. Chachi's gonna base and catch top to make sure Irrelevant can't push for any inhib towers. He has TP to rejoin. Irrelevant doesn't, so they could force a 5v4. Yeah, all it takes is a hook, right? Because Chachi has TP. Oh. And Irrelevant doesn't. Mercer's gonna be the one hooked in. Everfrost used, the thick skin coming out as well. There's the Cyclone, Mercer flashes away. Xerxes gonna jump out with the decoy as well. Misfits might look to re-engage. Two-man sleep, B2 going in. Death from below, a possibility. Xerxes trying to trade back in. There's the Death from below, goes wide. But the shutdown still comes in. Dale looking for a re-engage, can't find it. The Stranus have to walk away. Misfits able to find one, but they lose two inhibitors for it. Kobes looking here, he has Predator up, can't put the cage down. Neon. No flash, Mercer, no flash, still has access to the ultimate as well. Chachi's gonna clear out the top wave and Dragon is up. So I think Astralis are just gonna call for the Hextech Dragon, get themselves on soul point. No point risking the game. Chachi just catching top, maybe they could have forced 5v4, tried to push down to the Nexus, but taking two inips, getting yourself on Dragon soul point, playing it slow, it's always the safest bet. Now, Kobe has TP, so if they spot Irrelevant here, Kobe can just TP on the ward behind him. There's one down towards where the Hexgate would be at that blue buff. Chachi puts a ward over the wall as well, as they're going to go oh, for the it. Ghost. Unstoppable right. onslaught, Irrelevant dodges to the side. No mana on him, though. You have no mana. You got no mana, Irrelevant. You got nowhere to go. Slowed up, Event Horizon coming down. Hook's going to come in as well. Stuns him up, Primordial Burst, almost half his HP. And the death from below will secure the killer. Kobe now crested a thousand. Oh, he's gone back down as the Baron wears off. No, it wasn't even the Baron. What was it that just wore off I was him? not looking whatsoever, but... Was it a thousand a second he ago? Was, uh, he was over a thousand and it went down. I'm sure someone would tweet at us being like, I can't believe you didn't realize it's the interaction. I would have thought it went up because of the Magi's, right? Yeah, but, so, yeah. Um, yeah well, obviously, really... some sort of buff went down on him and uh, he lost it. Maybe he had an elixir that Perhaps. expired. Perhaps he did, but they're going to push into this top tier two. Irrelevant's dead. This is the last in him. So, Misfits, you have an option. Well, you have one choice here. It's defend your top in him. Either that be stall it down, try to clear the wave out, or just fight them the second the tower dies. We'll see what option they go for, because if they lo lose this inhibitor, the, the game is pretty much over. I think looking at it, the game may have been over in their minds a while ago. Astralis have just been dominant for the last 10 minutes or so, and they continue to beat as they take the third inhibitor of the game. Zhang Hun having an absolute masterclass on this pike, constantly in the right position, finding hooks. Had all that vision control in the early game that really set it up for them. Cosmic Drive. Cosmic Drive, there we are. Must have been Cosmic Drive, the game, the extra bonus AP that you saw. Um, but yeah, three nips down. Astralis can now just walk with the waves, wait for them to come out. But here's the TP. You can see the Super Creep, double Super Creeps are coming out of base right now. There is one in bot lane. Now on their way towards it, Astralis will just want to keep Misfits penned in their base for as long as possible, corral them like cattle into this area behind their walls. Irrelevant could try and answer down towards this bottom side. TP is not available for day or yet, so you couldn't have that really speedy reaction in terms of going down towards that bottom lane. And Astralis will reset 20 seconds on the Baron. Looks like they're gonna need the big purple worm to secure this game. Why not, you know? Could risk it. Why not? Could push in with the waves. Yeah. Why, why? You don't need to ris risk it, right? I don't need a biscuit, so you don't need to risk it. I would love a biscuit. Which, which one's your favorite biscuit? Hobnob. Hobnob. Hob Dude, hob they nob. were so good. Good old Chucky Hobnob. With a cup mm. of tea as well. Oh, delicious. We're so British.
We are, we are pretty <laughs> British, mate. <laughs> Well, they're going to start up the Baron. Misfits have to walk in. TP coming out. I think Charles could just stop the Baron here and just buy time. Wait for the waves coming. They play on their own game, not on Misfits' game. So they're just going to slow it down. And now Misfits realize, well, we now need to clear waves. So Charles is going to start it up again. It's almost like a seesaw effect. And DTO is going to lose half his HP. Oh, holy! That's without his ultimate, ultimate, by the way. Hook goes in as well. Mercer, Primordial Bursted. Does more damage, the lower health your opponent is. Unstoppable Onslaught coming in. Flash Hook! Will hit Mercer, Decimating Smash comes down as well, and Mr. Charge is just buying time for the rest of his team, the Super Minions as well, on the Nexus Towers. Mercer hooked back once again, Death from Below will mark his demise. And uh, Misfits, even three players strong, can't work their way through Vizichachi. Day or TP down towards the bottom lane, and it's all done for the Nexus falling. You have to feel here for Astralis. Definitely is, they're just gonna buff up the Super Creeps. Nothing Misfits can really do. They can try themselves a fight. Shatan flashes forwards. Looking for the Moldy Man Sleep, but he only lands it onto two. Jong Hoon still has the GA to come back. Donnie Shadow will find him. The minions doing so much work. And irrelevant, not. As Astralis will be able to lock this one down. Neon and VTO can only stand and watch as their Nexus falls for the third time in three games. Wow. This version of Astralis looks a hell of a lot different to previous iterations yep. we've seen. Two and one on the Super Week. Sitting pretty happy. Maybe they didn't have the hardest of schedules. Yes, they played against G2. Were a little bit competitive, but this is definitely a different version of Astralis. I mean, they got three wins in the entirety of Spring, and they're already two-thirds of the way there True. in three games. So I think this Astralis definitely revitalized coming into summer, and the addition of Jonghoon and Xerxes and Vizichachi seems to have really bolstered them as a team. I, I think Dior's stepping up as well. Yep. This is his second split in the LEC. I think he's been having fantastic games. Uh, the Vex was kind of like, I won't say his one trip, but Vex and Rise were his comfort in Spring, but now he's very willing to kind of go for different champions, explore different avenues of AD mids, things like the Victor we've seen already. So seeing a different style out of him, I'm sure he's been grinding a lot throughout the offseason, which, I mean, if, of course, if you don't make playoffs, your season is a lot shorter, which gives you a lot more time to just try to practice and reflect. Very true. It seems like it's working out really well for Astralis right now. Oh, yeah. Sorry. No, I just thought you were going to make a joke at the end of that sentence. No, right. no okay. jokes. Okay. No jokes here. I'm just enjoying it. Okay. I just pre preemptively started going, oh, God. See, that, we've got to that point now. Yeah, I know. It's, it's always in your head. Uh, but yeah, for Misfits, obviously a, a struggle of a week. A struggle of a weekend. They, they really don't seem to be on the same page. Uh, can't really find out exactly what is going wrong for them. And it seems like teams are, are very willing just to focus out VTO. The, the problem is nothing's happening in the early game. Yeah. And the lanes are stable at times. But then after lane phase, objective control is kind of horrendous in a sense. The mm -hmm. team fights, they just look so scattered. There was never really a team fight where we saw them all together or like a really good flank or a good yeah. setup play, you know, where you kind of bait the enemy team into you. Oftentimes, if your front to back, back sucks, you can try to find a way to bait the enemy team walk into you and then find angles on the flanks. Sometimes you can. You keep playing the game, both at LEC on Twitter. Zersi, Kobe, and Jonghun are your options. I know I saw... Uh, I Praise Jonghun quite a lot during that game. I think I think he really deserves. Oh uh, yeah, this this key player of the game. If you guys want to give it to him, obviously I think yeah. he had very strong vision control. He was roaming around a lot on that pike and actually set up his team really well. Yeah, I think Jonghun's team fights as well were fantastic. We saw triple kills, almost quadra kills coming out of him, always in the right place at the right time. And of course, if you just do that one slip up on pike, it can all fall apart. You need to make sure it all comes down in harmony to keep landing those ults at the exact right time before they can flash out, but also hit it before the damage share falls off. Definitely worked out well for him and for Astralis. Our first game of the day goes their way. And we still have a lot of things lined up for this Super Week. Of course, Vitality yep. versus BDS up next. That's going to be a, a banger of a game. And then we round out the day with your G2XL, the Battle of the Undefeated. That's going to be a fun one as well. G2XL, Battle of the Undefeated. Who would have thought? Yeah, who would have thought? Not me. That's because when you were on them, they weren't undefeated that much, were they? No. No. They were defeated. But you tried your best. Tried my best. Yeah, it's all about. It's all about. I, I got a medal of like you know. Join, what is it? The medal of competing or joining, trying. No. I uh, sorry. I have. Let's I have people talking to me in my ear at the same time. So I didn't <laughs> hear the song. Let's skip over that. Said. We'll skip over that and we'll skip over to an interview with Dale. Participation. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you so much for joining me after this game. Two and one for Australis here in the Super Week. How do you reflect on the result you had? Um. Two days ago, a friend of mine asked me how the first week we go. I said 2-1. I didn't say who we lose against. We lost against G2, but I think we still had a good game against G2. Yeah. So I'm pretty happy. Yeah, fantastic week for you so far and nice predictions. I will ask you for more predictions when I need them, actually. But talking more about Astralis, you guys showed a lot of diversity in the drafts you've been playing, whether it's the Hyper Carry on the bot lane or Vegar today, even for you, AP or Yone. How comfortable do you feel in the meta right now? 
Um, of course, we have some combos like uh, the Vega, for example, and the Yon. But uh, over the off season, I learned Victor or the control mages Victor, and uh, I think right now we have some drafts like a lot of diversity yeah. we can choose from and I'm pretty comfortable on most of it. Yeah, many weapons to choose from, which makes you a deadly opponent for the rest of the league. But focusing more on you, you entered the league at the beginning of the year as a rookie. And with the off-season changes that Astralis made, you are now guided by, by more experienced players, but also players who know how to play with each other because they were playing together with Splice. How is that helping you? Uh, it's helping a lot because, uh, of course, uh, as a rookie, you don't know how to play the map correctly, or at least that's for me. So uh, having uh, some veterans that just guide you, yo, uh, die or just go top lane, and I just have to press my buttons, my abilities, <laughs> uh, it's, it's really nice. Easy peasy, autopilot. Now, I know that this may have been your first experience playing in front of fans. How did you enjoy it? Uh, it's, it's really nice, I have to say. <laughs> Nothing much to it, it's, it's, it's cool. You can, you can give him some praise, Guy. He's been doing good and he's really happy playing with against you. Dejar, thank you so much for the interview. Thank you. Congrats on the really cool results here in the Super Week. And for more on the game, back to you guys in the studio. Maybe you shouldn't want to be, so I want to ask you about that as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi, so welcome back, obviously, to the Elysian. Thank you very much, Law, and I'm here to break down with Kobe, who I was just chatting to about this big 18-minute team fight where things got a bit crazy for the first time in this game. So I'd love to get your opinion first on how did you go about setting up for this? Obviously, it's not been a, as slow an early game as we had in a couple of our other days. What were your thoughts coming into this first off as a team? Um, yeah, so usually, like, uh, with my champion, at least with Vega, it's a pretty slow game uh, you want to play. But um, we push bot lane all the way, so that's the first step. Mm -hmm. And then we like, they start the Herald and we try to enter because we're stronger, or like we feel like we're stronger. And we get a really good flank onto the center here with uh, with Wukong. Yeah, and this uh, is obviously really weird because Senna normally yeah. wants to be on the back line, wants to be kind of safe, and that changes. Mm -hmm. So what's your thoughts at this point? Uh, I think they got, um, I mean, it's like prime position for Cyan if you can, they're like collapsing at the same time, so. I don't know if they should have tried to escape through like this joke, for example. Um, but in general, I think it's a hard fight for them if they're getting flanked by the, the Higgs gate. Uh, yeah, so obviously and, that ends yeah. up happening. Um, but then Santa goes down. That's target number one. But then you're set here. So obviously this is your position. And normally, yeah. as a Vega, you don't necessarily want to be within that range of Jack. So how did you think about yeah. playing out the back end of this fight? Because you aim to split it up. It becomes split up and that works for the, for the pike. How does that work out for you in this fight? Well, not great because uh, Jax jumps on me <laughs> and I instantly have to flash out. I think I was looking on this side and saw it was looking really good and I maybe I forgot to... Um, I think if I was smarter, I should just zone them off here with my uh, cage, like on, uh, in this area. But I just I just went forward, uh, tunnel vision, I guess. Okay. Um, um, but I have to flash out and I have ever for us, so luckily I'm fine to just uh, focus the, the Jax and whoever else is coming there now. Uh, but definitely I could have played it better. Okay, but of course you ended up playing it well enough, and I think the important thing in this clip for me is how it seemed like you achieved the objectives you need to and kind of then problem-solved your way through the rest of the team fight. I think overall, this was a very impressive team fighting game from you as a whole squad. So anyway, that's a bit of a closer look at one of the bigger fights we had. Got a couple of other things we want to talk about though, so we're going to go walk over to the desk to join Shots. Yes, Charles. come join us. Amazing. Really like that breakdown as well. Uh, congratulations, Kobe, even though you weren't too happy with the, the specific <laughs> team fight and how it played out. Overall though, uh, the Vega is something that you've gone for in the past actually as well. Um, and it's cool to see that you're pulling it out now, now that you have a new support by your side. Is he allowing you to kind of do or uh, be more creative, let's say in that bot lane? Um, yeah, so this draft we went for, uh, he gets to play Pike, which is one of his uh, better champions. And it's also fun for him, which is important right now, because actually Vega was the champ I started playing because I just thought it was really fun in yeah. the beginning. People have no clue what the champion does, and you just run around one-shotting people. Yeah, and, and to me, that was fun, yeah. And the thing which is now interesting because of that is now this is third champion in three games for your support for Jong Hoon. Um, we obviously are learning a lot about this player, seeing them on stage. From what I can see, he's shown a lot of different styles of play. What's your take on this guy that's coming to the roster? Um, he's a really nice guy, Jong Hoon. He's really funny. It's um, it's been a bit of a struggle in the beginning to communicate outside of the game, especially. But in game, it's easier because you can use pings and you can just use simple words like league terms. So mm -hmm. that's easier. Um, 
but yeah, we're getting along pretty well, uh, like the entire team. Um, so that's everything feels pretty nice right now. How is the reunion with, uh, of course, Vizuchachi is back in the is in the top lane and Xerxes is in the jungle. And how does that kind of coincide with the fact that you have some very experienced players like yourself and then you have a younger player? How is that all working together? I think we have a good mix right now. Um, but yeah, we have three more experienced players, I guess, and two two newer ones. So it's a, it's a solid mix, I would say. Mm -hmm. And that's just good vibes from the beginning because we are three players uh, in me, Visi, Chachi and Cirque, so we played together before yeah. and we're like good friends as well. And I all, then that's me and Dayo, who already have chemistry as well. So we just need to integrate like um, Jonghoon the most because everything else just went really natural. Um, yeah. Yeah, what was really interesting is that as we pull up a, a team fight from 26 minutes in, is that your team fights have been looking really good. And usually, team fight synergy and team fight communication is kind of one of the hardest things. So, why do you think those are going so well? I think our comp is, uh, I mean, we got ahead this game, um, but also our comp is just really strong at this point. If we play slow around my cage cooldown, uh, then it's, it's really difficult with the amount of melee champions the enemy team has. So, I think we didn't even realize how much stronger we were, so we were a bit too scared of points where I feel like we could just roll over them. So that's also what I tried to help with in, in comms at some point. Because um, stage games, you usually have a bit more nerves and everything, but I felt so strong at some point, I was just... I just wanted to keep chasing into them. Yeah. You mentioned those melee champions. This is something that we brought up in the green room too about talking about. Actually, they felt like a much faster paced game compared to what we've come to know from this patch because of those melee champions. Do you think that um, you, uh, picking these champions, you are ready to come into this to brawl, even though the meta slowed down? Uh, yeah, um, with Yon in the mid lane, he doesn't want to sit back and. Just, and he definitely just did wait, this game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, sorry, can you repeat? I no, kind of so like, Were you prepared bit. to brawl knowing you were picking a load of melees into a load of melees? Uh, yeah, of course. Not not for me specifically because I'm playing. The Vegas, one range so, champion, yep. Yeah, I just want to stay back, look at uh, the guys battling it out, and then I step in when it's needed, mm. kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm pretty sure the other guys are, are prepared. There was a pre-game interview with uh, Hiva because Misfits had actually not won a game yet, and he was very confident that he'd be able to set you guys aside. Do you think he was caught off guard by the draft specifically, or what was it that you think caught Misfits off guard? I mean, maybe they were caught a bit off. Um, I guess it was a bit special what we did. Um, it doesn't feel that way because it's something we've practiced many yeah. times. Uh, so I'm pretty sure we could win with another draft as well, like in the first two games we had. Uh, but they decided to ban Victor from a mid laner, so we had to <laughs> go a different direction. Yeah, maybe that was a blessing in disguise. Who knows? Because I never knew he could play such a mean Yone as well. So it worked very well. Um, Yonghun was actually Kia player of the game. That'll make him probably very happy. It's probably great for a new player, right? He, he'll be overjoyed that he gets to get this award from the audience. Yeah, I think he deserves it. Yeah. Um, not much else to say. It's true. I think Anyone we, we who had a wins good on game. Pike. Yeah, we had a good <laughs> game as a team and there were several standout players, so Absolutely. I think it's deserved. Okay, awesome. Well, congratulations to him. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back at, for Vitality versus BDS. And we'll also be covering picks and bans right here on the desk. Don't go anywhere. I'm gonna go take a break. Cool. Even the biggest champ needs a break.